show you a little bit about the technology behind the black rack. Then we're going to show how to tune your rack so that it sounds just perfect in the field for you. Then we're going to go into the actual communication with deer using rattling sequences and, and what those mean and how to signify that when you're up in your tree stand. And then finally, we're going to show you real-time communication and rattling sequences and how the deer actually react to the rack so that you can see what works and what's been working for us using this great new system, the Black Rack Rattling System. The technology of the Black Rack consists of a few different things. One obviously is the color, and that's to conceal your, uh, your movements in the tree. Deer have a, a real sense of seeing those white bright colors, you know, they use that flipping with their tails and they communicate that way. So they have a, a, a real instinctiveness when it comes to visual with a, a brighter color. So we wanted to make the black rack dark or black in color so that we could get away with a little bit more up in the tree. Now, another part of the technology would be the hard shell outer core that gives you that realistic sound of two actual deer fighting. Now, inside that outer core is what we call a bone core. It's a foam core that goes throughout the entire rack. Um, and that gives it the natural sound and that's what's causing that instinctive reaction when we're using this product out in the field. Now, the final piece of the puzzle here is the, the design is two full deer, two deer actually fighting. It's not just like uh, getting a shed and tickling antlers together, but you can actually sound like two full deer going at it in a real fight. And you just can't get those types of sounds and that, that natural uh, reaction out of deer with, with some uh, different technical type products that are out there. The black rack actually uh, creates the illusion of two deer fighting and it, and it really does work. Now let's go to Rod White, Olympic gold medalist. Uh, Rod's harvested thousands of inches of Boone and Crockett and Pope and Young bucks and Rod is uh, one of the probably the best communicators with deer that of anyone that I know and let's have Rod talk a little bit about how to communicate with rattling systems to deer. <laughs> I want to show you the basic technique that we use to make these racks perform at the highest level possible. And by doing that, we're going to one, carry our sound as far as possible, and two, also prevent ourselves from smashing our hands together. Lots of folks, when they'll pick up the antlers, we've noticed that shows want to grab them right in the center of the antlers. And really, you want to grab them down here, closer down to the bottom. And there's two reasons for this. One, obviously, because you don't want to smash your hands together. But also, two, a lot of the sounds that we're trying to generate are done by more twisting of the antlers. Just like when two bucks are coming together and there's two full racks hitting one another, there's more of a twisting motion that's going on than, than a straight bang on like you would see a couple maybe rams in the wild do. So. To essentially do that, you just want to hold, grab them, grab them down lower on the tines. You can see my hands are placed right where the, the main frame of the rack comes down, hits the what most people assume is the handle. And then I generally hit the top first, and then there's a twisting motion that happens. So essentially it looks just like this. There's really only two reasons you're going to see bucks fighting in the wild. One is for breeding rights, obviously, or dominance over does. And the other reason that you'll see them fighting is in food plots, uh, especially early in the season. And, and as you get even later in the season, uh, mature bucks in particular will, will likely run a lot of the younger bucks off of the food sources uh, as you get into the late season. The time that I'm most effective with the antlers is during that, that peak of the rut or the time when there's, there's that challenging that's happening or the hierarchy being established with the, within the, the deer herd itself and the area that you're at. So for me, the, the majority of my calling are the most effective times that I use antlers are coming into the last week of October uh, here in the Midwest and then going into the first few weeks of November. I have had some moderate success in the late season, but um, for the most part, the upper age class bucks are most respondent during that time period. So for me, I'm trying to achieve the maximum volume that I can because I want to reach out as far as I can 
um, and reach whatever deer may be out uh, a long distance, even the deer that are in the short distance. When you know those bucks are fighting, for the most part, this time of the year, it's not generally like a tickling of the antlers that's happening. So when you watch videos with me, you'll see, usually see me hit being pretty aggressive with the antlers. It's been my experience being real light with them, doesn't generally call much in. And when you watch a lot of those deer in the early season and late season that are fighting over food plots, for the most part, you're not seeing a lot of other bucks come running into that. So um, I'm pretty aggressive with my antlers and, and to get that volume that I need to get, um, that's one of the biggest reasons why I choose the black racks is because I can get that volume by twisting and turning and jamming the antlers and, and making a combination of those. So it looks a lot like this. I'll also use this quite a bit uh, whenever I actually have a deer coming into range. Um, and the times that I, I choose to use these antlers are whenever that deer's approaching me and he can't see me, meaning there's a big tree in front of me. Most of our sets are set up even with a camera guy. We've got big trees in front of us. Um, and that allows us to maneuver around with the camera and with us as deer are approaching. And we'll rattle a lot of times with a deer being under 100 yards from us and uh, to get them to come in that last little bit of distance. So um, you wanna make sure you wanna keep your movement to a minimum once they get within range. If you watch here in the wild, for the most part, the only time there's a real slam that occurs is when they first run into one another. So that sound is really created when it, with the top portion of the antlers whenever I hit them together like that. And that also will carry the, lo the lo loudest and the longest distance throughout the timber. But it's the twisting motion that actually sets the realism, and that's really what these racks do that a set of uh, uh, antlers that you pick up or a set of sheds that you find just simply can't. It's the twisting motion. That's a convincing sound that a deer needs to hear over a long distance or a short distance uh, to make him know and think that there are other bucks fighting in the area. Although generally not most effective on mature bucks, I do do some early season rattling. Believe it or not, sometimes uh, a reaction you'll get by tickling the antlers together, maybe to bring some does into range uh, to actually get a shot, especially if they can't see you rattling. Um, their curiosity often gets the best of them. Another thing is if you're hunting in an area where there may not be a high number of mature bucks, um, you can entice some bucks out in the food plot a little bit earlier than what uh, they would normally come out just by starting a small sparring. And a small sparring is just a simple tickling of the antlers. We, we don't hit them real hard. It's just real soft, pushing back and forth. If you watch them in that early season, they're not really all out kicking mud up in the air and, and really going at it. Um, really hard. They're just pushing each other back and forth. So you just want to imagine these two. That's a, that's a beautiful part about the black rack system is it, it, it is just like two sets of antlers. Imagine in your head what it looks like when two bucks are pushing each other around. There's not a whole lot of contact. It's just a couple clicks here and there. And so the tickling necessarily doesn't reflect the, the volume that you're going to be putting out. It just re more or less reflects the lack of impact that you're going to have with, the, with one set to the other set of antlers. One of the things I'll hear quite a bit is, is folks talking about how often to rattle or the, the timing in between rattling or how long do you rattle uh, when you are rattling in a set. Um, there's really no set hard or fast rule. In, in certain areas it seems like um, the longer and harder you rattle sometimes you, you, you get a lot more response and in other areas it doesn't, especially in the open country. It seems like if you rattle longer um, it, it seems like that sound, whether it carries further or it just takes longer for the bucks to come in across longer distances. When I'm in timbered areas or heavy draws, especially when I'm using decoys, I'm generally not rattling quite as long, but a sequence may last anywhere from 30 seconds up to about a minute and a half typically when I'm in the timber. When I'm out in the edge of the field, I may rattle a little bit longer, sometimes three and four minutes um, with some pauses and breaks in between and rattle again. I'll hear a lot of guys talk about how they like to rattle and then they wait 20 minutes and then they rattle again and wait 20 minutes. Really it doesn't correlate to anything other than if there is a deer in a particular area and he can hear your antlers, that's the goal and objective is to make sure that they hear that loud and clear and uh, if they're in the right mood, they will come in.
Typically in the early season, I don't spend much time rattling. I work the grunt call a lot more than what I do with the rattling antlers. Um, as the season progresses and we get into the, the second and the third week of November, I'll start to break out the antlers and start to use them a little bit more. The main reason is for this is because a lot of times for us, uh, we're hunting some smaller properties here in the Midwest and we don't want to over-educate deer with the antlers. We want to make sure we save that till prime time. So prime time for the most part, and almost every year, year after year, is that last week of October into the first week of November. That's when your antlers are the most effective at uh, bringing in deer of any age, age class really whatsoever. Um, once you get into the prime part of the rut, uh, antlers tend to kind of lose their effectiveness a little bit once that chase starts to begin. So around that November 7th to 10th period here in the, in the Midwest when it's the hottest, um, our antlers really don't, don't seem to be as effective as what they are as in the coming week. Now once those does are, the majority of the does are bred and the older bucks start to move from timber to timber and they start to travel wider range areas in search for does, rattling becomes extremely effective again. And some of the biggest deer I've killed have been going into those last couple weeks in November and nearly all of them have been killed over black, uh, black racks just like these. Now once the guns start going off in your area, for the most part your antlers become ineffective for, for a short time period. And that's mainly just because of the pressure that's going on uh, during gun seasons. Of course if you are hunting large tracks where you don't have a ton of gun pressure, you don't have large groups of, of shotgunners or rifle guys who are doing drives, for the most part your antlers will stay effective. Once you get into the late, late, late seasons, and I'm talking the seasons that go into late December and, and January, antlers can still be effective and they seem to be most effective on mature deer. Um, typically, I'm going to go back to more pushing, pushing around with the antlers than what I am an all-out brawl with the antlers. And uh, we have had lots of deer that we've killed in the late season, or several deer we've killed in the late season, uh, of real upper age class structure. But the younger deer tend to not really pay much attention to it. They're more concerned with food and, and, re and, and replenishing their nutrients into their body. So um, they become a little bit less effective. But they can be effective, and they're certainly something that I carry in my pack all season long. In most instances, I'm using these two antlers just like they're intended to use as an all-out brawl that's happening in the timber. However, there are instances when it, once a deer gets under that 100-yard range where I may not be able to do exactly what I'd like to do with them, um, meaning may not be able to make full contact with them and twist them and turn them because he, could, he can see where I'm at. There's been several times, and uh, well, you'll see me on video, where I actually take the antlers and I just put them side by side like this. I'll have my bow in my hand, and I'll just reach behind the tree and I'll actually rub the tree back and forth on the bark. Um, that can be a real enticer coming into the end portion when you're trying to get them that last 100 yards uh, if they, as long as they can't see a move. So that's a technique that I use quite a bit and uh, it can be really beneficial, especially when you're trying to get them into bow range. Another instance where, where we'll use them when we're not up in the tree stands and we may be on the ground hunting maybe some brush country down in Texas or uh, in Kansas, sometimes we don't hunt out of tree stands because there's lack of trees that are big enough to hang stands in. So we'll use the antlers basically just to, to mess around in the brush, push them around just like a deer would. Again, just you always want to be thinking, what does it look like whenever you watch those videos when those bucks are pushing around the brush or when they're pushing around each other? You're just trying to mimic those exact same sounds. So in a lot of cases, again, I'll just put the antlers together like this and I'll rub some of that brush back and forth. And sometimes I'll really knock it around. If you watch videos, you'll see some bucks really pushing some of those smaller mesquite trees around if you're down in an area like Texas or parts of Kansas where that's pretty prevalent. <laughs> 